So recently we looked at the way light is used to indicate the form of mountains and how some ridges come towards us and so on. Today we'll look at the foothills leading up to the mountains as this is going to be fairly useful in our paintings I imagine. So we'll add to our linear perspective that we looked at in the earlier sessions and today we'll look at aerial perspective. Okay. As I'm not an oil painter, I'm too impatient to let it dry without any assistance. I'll mix a little green, mostly start with my yellow, uh, and some uh, blue, a little bit of red, and this will be my colourful cut line in my hills. I'll do is paint the outlines of the hills and so where a ridge might come down and join them to other hills or hills going in behind each other and uh, we'll have a little ridge coming down the side here maybe. Okay. In the meantime I'll just have a sort of mid green and I'll roughly paint these in. As you can see, I haven't really uh, mixed my three colours that I've made the green from particularly well, so a little bits of the red show through, but that all helps the uh, visual interest of the finished painting, I imagine. I'll mix a dark green by adding a little bit more blue and a little bit more red, and this will be where my darker tones in the hills will appear because of the uh, light direction. These are going to be the uh, deeper valleys later, and, I've, uh, and I shall gradate them a little bit so we get from uh, dark to light in a gradual sort of way because the uh, nature of the hills are that they're sort of curved rather than angular as we saw in the uh, mountains earlier on. I've added a little bit of white to my uh, green and a bit more yellow, a bit more red. I sort of add red to neutralise it, I find the green too garish and strong otherwise. Now I shall build up the uh, highlights. I'll, I'll gradually work on this, strengthening the colours and smoothing them out to try and uh, create the form as I go. Of course this takes a little time to get it uh, how I might want it. Patience is not my middle name. As things retreat into the distance, they also tend to become quite a bit paler and they start to get a bluish colour or the colour of the sky. So we're going to work with blues and so on at the back here and we'll put the sky in at the same time and we'll see how this adds to the aerial perspective to make things look further away. So I've added some blue and white, a tiny bit of my green and I shall start painting these hills. I'm blurring the edges a little back as I go back here, as I will in the sky, because the more distant things are not so clearly defined. They're further away from us and they're not so sharp as those things that are close to us. So you'll see me uh, tending to blur some of the edges a little bit here and there. I'll make a paler colour still for the uh, mountains that are further away. This is called a dry brush, where I, my brush is virtually dry, I'm not adding any more paint to it, but I'm uh, using it to cover some of these other colours, just to uh, reduce their intensity. Now it's time for the sky, 
So I'll need to mix some more blue. Yeah, quite nice. I see I've got some green and yellow on the brush. That looks quite good. Mostly white with a tiny amount of blue. Always start with a painless colour. Spring arrived today, a day early, so things are drying very quickly. The sky, as we've seen before, uh, is paler near the horizon, so I'll start right by the horizon now with some white, add it into the blue, and build up the sky and start to make it more sort of realistic. Again, I'm softening the uh, line where the sky starts and the um, hills end as they're fairly distant and we don't want them too sharp. Let's just loosen, soften those up a little bit. And sort of a bit of dry brush we talked about to sort of darken the sky. I change the pressure as I go so that it's uh, some parts a little bit more firm than other parts. Hills in the distance are becoming quite misty, aren't they? <laughs> like that. Oopsie, what's that? A leap. Time for me to start building up the colour on these foregrounds and give them a bit of uh, warmth. As the, the ones that are closer to us will be warmer than the ones that are further away. Blues, cooler, yellows and oranges and so on, warmer as they get closer to us. So I'm going to brighten up the foreground here or warm it up I should say to make it seem closer to us. A bit of the yellow and red and still some of the green in there a little bit, uh, the greenish tones. This looks a little bit dead over here so I'll um, bring this hill out a little bit. I've put some uh, tiny bit more red into our and yellow and that touch of white into our green. Uh, I'll perhaps add a few little uh, bits of trees in here maybe, just behind this hill and that'll add a little bit of uh, contrast here which will sort of show the form of the hill. Anywhere we go in New Zealand we're going to find uh, hills but there's all going to be some sheep or fences and uh, maybe a farmhouse and a few things. We're not going to see them bare as they are in this picture. But at this stage this looks okay but I think I'll darken the uh, upper part of the sky and, which may mean I need to change this a little bit as well. Um, Keep this dry brush going, which gives us a sort of nice soft edge here. We'll darken this and warm it up even further, I think. The sky is like the land. This part of the sky is closer to us, it's warmer. This part of the land is closest to us, it is warmer. They get fainter as they go away. So do remember the sky is not a flat thing behind here, it comes up over the top of us. Okay, so it's warmer near the top. Anyway, I hope this has been of some use to you. The, um, we started off looking at landforms, I think we probably looked at a few other things as well. But um, if you wish to visit my website, here it is down below, and of course, always like you to subscribe. Thank you.